um, I know I'm kind of late to the party, or the entire crowd for that matter, for several years, but I now have the Moondrop Starfields to test out. They're finally in my hands to give it a, you know, a try. And now that I have like that and like the, the Arias and the Aria Snow, I, I have a better idea of like my idea about them. So with that being said, let's talk about it. <laughs> Right now, as per usual, these were sent out to me for review, but this won't affect my review in any way, shape, or form. Everything you're gonna hear here is gonna be my own personal opinion. Also, also, um, you know, I don't necessarily own all these things. In case you think I'm like super wealthy, um, the night, the really nice earbuds, I typically don't get to keep. Like, I gotta send the Starfields back, I gotta send the Aria Snow back, and I bought these uh, Arias, you know, the standard Arias, with my own personal money. So, you know, in case you're thinking I just have an unlimited supply of like the really nice IEMs, I don't get to keep them all, especially the nice ones. So, you know, heck, my main set of IEMs. Are are the moon drop variations and I bought these myself and b boy boy did I bite a really fat bullet when I got these but uh, for me it's worth it but anyway we're talking about the star fields today so that being said let's get started starting with the box you can tell the moon drop hasn't quite jumped into the whole waifu thing yet but anyway inside the box you'll get the IMs a carrying case which inside contains a bag of ear tips and a bag with the cable inside you also get a pair of tweezers and extra filters and some paperwork <laughs> starting with the cable it's definitely not my favorite in the world because while it is braided it is kind of messy looking and it does tangle kind of easy on one end is an angled 3.5 millimeter jack. At the split, you get the circular moon drop splitter with no chin slider. And at the end are two pin connectors on pre-curled ear hooks. Now, as for the IEMs themselves, they're much like the moon drop Kato and the KXXs, or rather, the moon drop Kato is like them, which is good because we get an all metal build. And in the case of the Starfield, we have this very pretty paint job, which you should take care of because it has been known to chip. Anyway, on top are your two pin connectors, and of course, the stems are fully made of metal with little grills in them. For vanity's sake, here's how they look like on my head, and just like the Kato's and the Aria series, they fit quite well. Well, and they don't stick out too much and in the case of these ones they actually look really pretty. Comfort wise it's very similar to the Kato and the Arias because they're very similar in shape if not the same in case of the Kato and I'd say that's a good thing because they fit in your ears quite well and I can wear them for many hours at a time though I should note that comfort will depend on what ear tips you're using, the shape and size of your ears so your mileage will vary. Though I think for most people out there you're going to be just fine with these because the size of them isn't too big and the only people I would imagine having trouble with these are those with very very small ears. Alright now before we get into like the whole sound and stuff with these guys. I will note something about the build of them. They are, first of all, fantastic, but I should warn you that, you know, like, um, according to a lot of other reviewers and people who have experienced it, this coating is nice and you should take care of it because it can scratch off or chip off. And someone from my comments also noted that this is also true. This can also happen to the regular moon drop Arius because, you know, like a razor blade laptop, which is like all black, if you scratch it, it's going to show silver under it. That can happen to these guys and especially with, I think, the coating on the Starfield because it's more of a painted coating that's kind of shiny. I think if you're not careful with it, it can ship off. There have been experiences with that, so, you know, take care of it if you really care about the looks of it. Uh, meanwhile, the Moondrop Aria Snow doesn't have, like, any magical coating, so if it gets scratched, yeah, it's hard to tell. So, you know, that, that being said, let's get into the sound of the Starfields. So, um, when it comes to the sound of the Starfields, I would say, because I think a lot of people have compared them to the Arias when the Arias came out, because they came out, um, like, right after the Starfields, a lot of people say they're basically the same thing, and I can't say that they are, but they are close. But now that we have the Moondrop Aria Snow, the Starfields, I would say, are a direct upgrade to the Moondrop Aria Snow versus the act, you know, the standard regular Arias. If you've seen the patch reviews, the Snow edition of the Arias are essentially a slightly more detailed, crispier version of the Moondrop Arias, which are more natural and smooth. So, like, um, less smooth, more detailed on the Snow editions. And with that in mind, I'll be comparing the Moondrop Aria Snow to the, you know, the Moondrop drop starfields for the most of this review just because they're more related and then again i might as well include the moon drop aria in the equation every now and then because i know some of you guys are still interested about it in terms of its comparison to the starfields and if it's an upgrade or not so that said let's get into like the sound range starting to the low end in which case they all share a very similar sound signature so it's going to be a more warm sound you're going to get more bass a slight recession of mids and a little bit of boost in the highs but how they handle it is a little bit different so with the arias they come off a little stronger on the low end whereas on the you know the moon drop starfield there still is a pretty good amount of bass, but it's not going to be as forward as I'd say on like the Moondrop Arias. Like the thump and the punch is still there. It's pretty decent, but it's not like an insane amount. It's like a good, comfortable amount I think most people would like. The Starfields have slightly less oomph than the Arias, but I still think it is pretty decent. Yeah, that's the low range. So moving on to the mid range, that's where 
things start to get a little bit different. On the crispiness scale, you have the smoother, more you know, naturalish kind of sounding mids on the arias, which gets a little bit more detail as you move to the aria snow, and then a lot more detail or a lot more crispiness and clarity uh, when you get to the star fields. I just think the way they handle the mids in the presentation, while very similar to each other, it's a slightly more forward than the the, the latter in this directionality, but um, you know, from low to more, I guess. But with the star fields, I think the presentation of detail and clarity is just much better. So you're going to get more of that like audio information, which is like good because it can dig into those micro details a little bit better. And then if you go into the highs, this, you know, continues suit where the highs on the star fields, I think are also just more clear. There's just more clarity and the details are more present. It's got more of that micro detailing, though it can run the risk of getting harsh at times compared to the other two. The soundstage and imaging on all three is uh it's very very similar honestly like the sound stage on all three i say was a bit larger than usual for an IEM, and you know, IEMs it's a smaller sound stage, but for an IEM it is slightly larger than usual. The size is more wide than it is long, though I do think on the star fields it is more wide than it is, you know, though there's you know there's more width than there is depth. Whereas on the Arias, yeah, yeah, there's still more width than there's depth, but less so. So it's slightly more of a, um, a circular round versus the wider oval shape that you get on the star fields. The height on all three of them is just okay. It's you know, that's never that's always been a pain point for like earbuds in general when it comes to height like you can still get some sense of like vertical height but it's just it's okay the imaging of the star field is pretty good much like you know the arias but i do think the star fields handle it a little bit better being slightly more precise just because of that extra detail we get and how it handles the stage though i do think um, it could have some more depth like the arias would to give you a more rounded shape because that's better for gaming versus having an ovular shape like for music this might be okay because you know with the width of the sound stage of the the Moondrop Arias, it still does do a good job in presenting the sound accurately from where they are. Um, it's got good sound separation for that, so, you know, that's in, for gaming world, so that's good for tracking, but the width being more wide than it is, you know, being more ovular than it is, like, circular ovular compared to the Arias, I, it will affect its um, presentation of like, the world in, for tracking in games. But even then, as I say this now, when I was playing, like, competitive games with the Moondrop Starfields, I found them to be pretty good for tracking people in competitive shooters. Had no trouble finding where people were around me, despite like you know having a wider soundstage than a you know a, a longer soundstage it still had good precision for tracking people and you know i didn't have any trouble with it and i do think when it comes to like being compared to the arias it did a better job in those games just because of the way they presented the mids and the highs with more detail and clarity it helps you like get your attention to those sounds better so you can track those sounds better so you know for competitive shooters they do a pretty good job are there better things out there than the star fields yes but even then i'd still say they do a pretty damn good job now with the sound signature that the star fields has one would imagine that just like the arias and many other moon drops it would do really good in non-competitive games and that is right it does an excellent job in the non-competitive games, open world games, because the sound is very crispy, the way it handles the size of the field of the world in here is good. You get a good sense of depth of the world, you get a feeling of how large it is. It is an immersive sound like the last two. And when it comes to my experience there, I would be hard pressed to say which one I preferred more. But for what it's worth, I do think the slightly more detailed like mids and highs does help me immerse myself in the world better when I was using the star fields but it wasn't in a way that it eased me into the world the same way like the arias did because it was just kind of like helped me ease me into that immersion whereas the star fields it was like taking a jump in and i would have to know i'm not about to hit the water and then I'm, now i'm entering this new world you know whereas with the arias i was comfortably slowly sinking into this immersion i don't know it's hard to describe um i think it's because of the way these are more detailed these sounds just kind of kept coming at you when it came to like the wind and the grass if you were like very sensitive to that versus with the arias the sound came more naturally because you know in the real world you're not always like um being presented these sounds you'd have to stop and listen to them as they come by because you can be in a field of grass in the real world and you'd have to actively listen to the grass being blown by the wind versus them being a little bit more present like you know having slight amplifiers in your ears if that makes sense like these kind of bring those sounds to you which for some can be more immersive and to others might be less immersive it's uh it's kind of weird it really depends on the mood i guess when it comes to non-competitive games so like when 
it comes to non-competitive for these three, uh, it's it's it really depends on how you like your sound. All right, now the big question I think a lot of you guys are probably wondering is, are the Moondrop Starfields better than the Arias, and is it worth that extra thirty dollars? Well, for competitive shooter peoples, kind of yes. For less competitive like shooters and more, you know more open world kind of like games uh no when it comes to like gameplay and stuff like that the moondrop starfield is essentially like if you liked the sounds of the aria but you wish they were a little bit more oriented for like shooter games more competitive shooter kind of games like yeah there's better choices out there but if you really like the aria sound for that and you're hoping it was more tuned for those type of games for you know competitive stuff then the starfields are definitely an upgrade for you it, it just makes sense because of the way it's tuned and how it performs but if you're like more casual, less less inclined to play those games, or you only play them every now and then, you prefer less competitive games, more open world kind of games, then these are, they're not going to be really much of an upgrade from the Arias or Arias Snow. So yeah, that's basically all I have for like the Moondrop Starfield. They're basically like Arias that are slightly more tuned for competitive shooters and being slightly more expensive. So yeah, it kind of hurts to guess be more competitive but you know some of you may argue that there are better earbuds out there for shooter games competitive games and you are right like if you're just in it to win it and you don't care about like um most of the things except winning then you'd probably be using 10 t2s or something like that but if you're someone who just really likes an enjoyable sound that the arias gave and you're once again looking for something uh more competitive with the similar sound once again Starfields are a good choice. Notice I didn't compare them to like um, the variations which I mentioned a little bit earlier that I have. Um, that's because the sound of these are just very different compared to all of these. Being more of a, I guess, a super upgrade to the Arias. But that that's for another time if I get all the Moondrop stuff. So unless, unless I end up returning these two guys, in which case it's going to be a little bit difficult. And I have to save some money to buy and compare or just ask for all the units to review in one time but yeah that being said uh i don't want to get this video too long so if this video did help you out leave me a like subscribe for more content and i'll see you guys next time thanks for stopping by and supporting the channel all the time and uh it's, it's been exciting i never thought i would get these to review but you know you know especially after getting these but now that i have them and i got to check the differences between them it does make sense that there are differences to them because you know some people are like you know if you came up with the aria as long as you discontinue these well it's because they're the difference but i digress so i'll see you guys next time there's I, I'm becoming a sound nerd. This is terrible. Uh, this, mm, I, I only meant to just be into games, but I'm slowly becoming an audiophile. See you guys next time. Or that, or I am an audiophile, and I just refuse to accept it. So, see you guys next time.